Hi, Phil Rainey here, Goat Man, making a bit of a video. I um, wanted to sort of uh, express a little bit about uh, how God makes things happen, how he's got uh, complete control in the world. And um, But anyway, my uh, I had problems with the intelligence service. Uh, well, it goes back years when uh, MH370 disappeared. So I've got it written down here, I'm trying to read this, so it looks a bit... Yeah, and um, God took me on a circuit of the internet, uh, and from differing articles, uh, it was clear that the uh, Earth's magnetic field strength had dropped to zero locally, uh, where MH370 was flying. And uh, when that happens, the secondary radar and radio communications from the plane is lost, so that the broadcast from the plane that tells what it is uh, to others is lost. Now, the Chinese and the Americans uh, have been confronting each other uh, of, uh, uh, around the area for some time and the uh, it's just playing sea chicken with each other there's some articles in the internet about them playing sea chicken with their warships uh, you know the Chinese were trying to make these islands and take more control of the uh, uh, ocean around uh, China so that uh, they can launch their nuclear submarines undetected into the ocean Whereas, of course, the Americans don't want them to uh, be able to launch their nuclear submarines undetected into the ocean. So they're trying to stop them. And, uh, um, and uh, anyway, so they, they had a confrontation. They lost the radar, the secondary radar from uh, the plane, MH370, which... Um, uh, and... The, uh, some, the American warship uh, basically shot down MH370. Um, got this cord in the way here. So, um, yeah, and uh, anyway, so they, uh, following that, I uh, entered a submission on a, on a web page called The Truth About MH370, which presumably is for the Chinese people who lost people in the plane. Uh, trying to find out what happened to them, and um, but after that, um, the flap on about a week after that, the flap on of the MH370 washed up on uh, Reunion Island. Well, well, it was actually put there, but you know, it was washed up on Reunion Island. And after that, uh, a guy turned up at work where well, I worked at uh, Starrick and Greenwood, a refrigeration company, and uh, his name was, went by the name of Ethan Mills, and he had elite skills and elite balance and elite coordination. And um, basically, he's trying to uh, seduce me into becoming a, uh, a drug grower, a drug dealer. And um, because the uh, intelligence service wanted me locked up, and um, he, um, he started an apprenticeship there. and. Uh, um, and after a while, we really realised this had failed. This uh, trying to get get to me into a criminal, and so um, they um, basically uh, said uh, one. We had one day there where he said, "I wouldn't last long, but I um, I was not to kill myself." But uh, and a couple of weeks after that, I had to travel travel to Blenheim. I was a little worried as I suspected the intelligence service was putting uh, vehicles on the road to kind of race against me uh, to try and encourage me to crash and I prayed to God to protect me and as I uh, left Nelson um, the armed defenders van went out in front of me and about I don't know six or seven police cars every few minutes would race past me and um, uh, yeah and but anyway I made it safely to Blenheim but I um, I sort of I was a bit concerned at this point. I thought, man, maybe um, maybe they're trying to kill me. Maybe they put a shooter on the road, and um, the armed defenders went out and caught him. And um, that Tuesday after that weekend, uh, John Key, who was Prime Minister of New Zealand at the time, gave his normal press conference, and it was reported he looked like he'd heard the worst news he had ever heard, and. Um, Basically, I think that, uh, well, I don't know. I'd, I mean, I, I haven't got the inside story. I only know certain things that happened, and I can only draw the dots between them, but I'm kind of assuming that uh, a shooter was put on the road, and uh, he was caught, and uh, 
basically a prosecution was brought against John Key, which is why he had to retire as uh, Prime Minister. And um, they, um, so they pretty much tried to murder me there. And then uh, I was in desperation. I thought, uh, man, they're trying to kill me now. And um, because uh, by this stage I realised that the magnetic field of the Earth was growing weak, and uh, which could have caused a complete apocalypse. And um, I knew that um, they shot down the plane. And um, anyway, so uh, um, I thought, what am I going to do? Uh, what am I going to do to try and stop them from uh, killing me? So I only had one idea that I thought, you know, it wasn't even a, it wasn't really much of an idea. I thought maybe if you had a um, this, this idea of a radiation heat pump, which was a thought I had that if you had um, two spheres, one within the other, with a complete vacuum in between. That uh, given the, uh, I've sort of done a calculation from uh, radiation laws that one sphere would receive more radiation from the other than from the first to the other, and uh, from the other to, and, 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 and so one would heat up and one would cool down without just by way of the uh, amount of radiation not going between them, and um, I uh, did the calculation and uh, showed. Well, I thought was this idea on on, on the internet because I knew my computer was monitored, and um, they seemed to like that. Actually, they, uh, um, you know, I'd be sweeping the floor and Stark and Greenwood and uh, cleaning up, and because I wasn't very good at, <laughs> I was pretty uncoordinated uh, and not very good at actually doing much. But um, and he come and said to me, um, "You're a genius," and I said, "Oh." I, I, and he wasn't really joking, you know, actually, they, they, they kind of favoured me for a while and um, Obama was being a bit kind to me. And then uh, then Trump became president and it all turned nasty again and Ethan came and told me that it didn't work. I knew he was talking about the radiation heat pump, he's saying it didn't work. And uh, they turned a bit nasty, but um, this is just the background. I'm just telling you this for a background of what I'm trying to get to telling you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, it just goes on and on. I'm afraid it's just it's a never-ending story. But um, um, thing is, uh, one day I was. Uh, this is the funny. This is the thing that amuses me the most about this is this is this is a sort of uh, kind of uh, how crazy God can make things happen and how He can make anything happen. This is just. This is just kind of like just one instance instance of uh, complete madness, or well, not madness. It's God's. We might think God's mad, but that's because He's just so much higher than us. We don't understand His ways. But um, we, I went down to deliver some uh, refrigerant to. Uh, I think it was King Salmon, um, because the refrigeries were working down there, including Ethan Mills, and uh, I saw Ethan first. Um, and gave him the refrigerant and he uh, looked at me and he kind of said um, uh, I, I can't remember the exact words but he sort of basically was going to ask me a question and uh, but I could see he didn't want to ask me a question but he, he had in fact been, you, know, you could tell by he, he thought that I wouldn't be able to answer it because um, he knew I was pretty slow and stupid and thick so he kind of, because um, he, he watched me work so um he didn't want to ask me this question, but he'd obviously been told to ask me, and he said to me, um, um, well, basically, he says, why do you think uh, it's colder at the magnetic poles than uh, uh, than elsewhere? And uh, that's because I've been watching, uh, they, they know what I've been watching, they monitor my computer, but I've been watching a, a, a video on YouTube about a guy who reckoned that... Um, uh, we reckon the poles had almost split at the, at the you know the magnetic poles and uh, and and when they looked at the swarm satellites uh, of showing the magnetic field strength there'd be two strong places where the field lines were really strong which this guy assumed was where the magnetic lines we should call, call it magnetic lines but we'll just call it you know, illustratively curl into the earth and so the magnetic field there's really strong so he's saying that's where the magnetic poles in fact um are, and he noted that the points where um, these magnetic 
field strength was the strongest near the poles was also the coldest. It wasn't at the uh, geographic pole where the earth was spinning. And, um, and uh, he thought it related to uh, the, the coldness at the, at the magnetic poles related to the magnetic field. And so Ethan asked me, uh, why do you think the magnetic, why it's colder at the magnetic poles? And uh, I said, I don't know. I How the hell would I know? Because I didn't have a clue. I just watched this video. I didn't even know if it was true. I just still don't know. But um, and uh, Ethan sort of says to me, um, "Well, you're supposed to be the genius," because he's kind of, he's a bit angry because he kind of didn't want to ask me the question because he felt it was stupid asking me. And um, and then uh, well, he's a good guy. Don't get me wrong. Ethan Ethan was a good guy. I don't you just, just don't don't get the wrong idea about him. But this was just uh, how it went. And um, and then um, the funny thing is then uh, another workmate, uh, Fridgy, um, Steve Fowler comes over and um, we're having a bit of a conversation just as we're getting some stuff out of the van and I was, I was about to leave and they're talking about uh, changing the refrigerants because uh, uh, the authorities were talking about banning a whole lot of the refrigerants that we uh, now had which were to replace the ozone deleting refrigerants but apparently the new ones were greenhouse refrigerants and so and uh, had real greenhouse warming effect so they wanted to get rid of them as well and they're talking about going to uh, explosive type refrigerants natural refrigerants that um, which are you know kind of difficult for fridges to work with or more dangerous and uh, they started talking about you know what are they going to do with the refrigerants and then um, uh, Stephen Fowler says um, oh what do you call it um, Oh gosh, I can't remember. He basically starts talking about. Uh, I might have to Google this. Um, when he uses a fancy word, basically for magnetic refrigeration, I can't remember what it is, but it's a word that we, uh, you know, Ethan would have never heard before. And because um, he talked, because I have actually talked before to um, Stephen Fowler about magnetic refrigeration, because uh, they were trying to make domestic fridges that work on magnetic refrigeration principles. And uh, I just turn to Ethan and say this word, which I cannot even remember what it is, which is a fancy word for magnetic refrigeration. I said, that's magnetic refrigeration. And Ethan's eyes just lit up like saucers. And um, I just spent all day laughing, just thinking that um, I didn't have a clue, but God provided the answer anyway. Um, and I just laughed my head off all day. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's just, yeah, it's just crazy. And... Uh, yeah, but um, so I didn't have a clue what 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 caused this uh, cooling at the magnetic poles. But apparently, uh, they say that um, when there's a strong magnetic field, if there's magnetic material or possibly charged particles, that um, the magnetic field will uh, steady the. Uh, well, this is this is actually kind of false science in a way, but we won't go into that. But um, it will um, cool the uh, have a cooling effect and. Um, and that the particles will be held more steady and it will be less hot and be sort of a refrigeration at that point. And uh, they can use this to actually make uh, refrigeration to refrigerate uh, fridges. Uh, well, the, the, the researchers were working on it. And um, basically the suggestion was is, uh, that's why uh, there was a cooler spot at the uh, magnetic poles. And uh, this affects the weather and the, and the patterns and the, the wind patterns and the... Um, Arctic and the Antarctic, and uh, so that's what happened there. Anyway, that's all. That's all for now. Over and out. Full rainy goat man. Have a good day. Um, God has kept me alive. They keep trying to kill me, but uh, He's kept me alive. And uh, yeah, he, all honor and glory to God. And um, yeah, I. I Thank, thank Lord that I'm alive today and I'm having a good day and that I can breathe and that, uh, yeah, it's good to be here. See you later. Bye.